Britons trapped amid the escalating violence in Sudan are still waiting to be rescued as Rishi Sunak pledged to pursue every avenue to end the bloodshed and ensure the safety of those remaining there. In a dramatic rescue mission, SAS forces evacuated British diplomats and their families as fighting raged around them in war-torn Sudan. The elite unit is understood to have joined the RAF and the Royal Marines in a complex and rapid evacuation from Khartoum after airstrikes left the capital city without running water and electricity. Hundreds of people have been killed in a brutal conflict between the Sudanese army and a paramilitary group known as the Rapid Support Forces. British citizens who remain trapped amid the escalating violence have pleaded for the government not to abandon them. Rishi Sunak yesterday pledged to pursue every avenue to end the bloodshed in Sudan and ensure the safety of those still remaining there, the Prime Minister said, UK armed forces have completed a complex and rapid evacuation of British diplomats and their families from Sudan. Amid a significant escalation in violence and threats to embassy staff, I pay tribute to the commitment of our diplomats and bravery of the military personnel who carried out this difficult operation. We are continuing to pursue every avenue to end the bloodshed in Sudan and ensure the safety of British nationals remaining in the country. I urge the parties to lay down their arms and implement an immediate humanitarian ceasefire to ensure civilians can leave conflict zones. Defence Secretary Ben Wallace said the operation involved more than 1,200 personnel from the British Army, Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force, he said, the UK armed forces undertook a military operation alongside the United States. France and other allies. They have evacuated British embassy staff and their dependents from Khartoum due to the escalating threats against diplomats. Military sources said the SAS were. But the many Britons left behind face a dire situation. Densely populated areas in the capital have seen the heaviest fighting, including gun battles and the use of tanks. Khartoum's 5.4 million residents have been badly affected because many targets, such as military headquarters and the presidential palace, are close to residential areas, explosions have hit key infrastructure and civilians have been left without running water and electricity. Hospitals have also been targeted, leaving health professionals struggling to cope with the thousands of people who have been injured since the conflict began. Two ceasefires have been announced but both collapsed as fighting continued between the warring factions. A British Sudanese woman described the most harrowing experience of my life as she spent six hours hiding under a bed with her terrified family without water, Rosen Ahmed has pleaded to the British authorities for help, asking, if there is no plan to get me out, please tell me why. Ms. Ahmed, who travelled to Sudan to attend her cousin's funeral nine days ago, said, I have been hiding under my bed for the last six hours, the area where I stay has been shelled to shreds. I have heard nothing but explosions and gunfire and shelling screams for the past six hours. Only now has it died down, on top of that we have to deal with the fact that there are rogue soldiers walking around our streets, randomly raiding our homes, and then we don't have water. The writer and activist, who lives in London and Dubai, described how the attacks had been constant for the past week after the violence broke out on April 15, she added, I am alive only by the grace of God and by the strength of my surrounding family members. We are all mentally devastated. I, and my family members, are terrified to a point where we have gone numb. I don't know why we have received no information as to our evacuation, as a British national, I haven't heard anything from the British EMB.